Hey everybody, welcome to uh, your boy Campfamous HD and the girl. I don't know what's your nickname. Tammy. Well, yeah, but you have your normal nickname. Like I have Cat, and then Catfamous HD, which is my uh, hilariously ironic YouTube handle. Okay, I guess we're not getting a response for that. God damn it, are you chewing? I'm thinking. Well, this should take a while. It's, um, Tabby. Four twenty. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I'm wearing sunglasses indoors because I'm a tool. Um, oh. we're playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, Tabby, what do you think this is? If it has lesbians in it, I'm gonna be just fine. You're the lesbian in this game. Yeah, let's let's go. All right. So, um, this should be good for you. Uh, since, you know, the thing, oh. the whole thing with Luke, you're, uh, you're uh, gonna, this is gonna be your rebound game. You're gonna have a rebound life loop. It's like the, I broke up with Sabrina, like, a year ago. Well, yeah, but the thing with Luke that just happened. Oh, he has a girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention ma she might draw to herself. Are you gonna read it out the entire fucking time? Bitch, I might. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but just kinda works out because you've known each other for so long. I don't have friends, so I won't know. Um, we used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. It, it kind of like me and you and going to work. Except I'm the one who just oversleeps. Uh-huh. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah, ah. I overslept again. Why are you giving her a British accent? Um. Just don't. <laughs> but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Wait, I should read me so loud. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, <laughs> it's funny that I'm reading your voice. Okay, so... <clears throat> you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me! That's me, Zoe! But if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. <laughs> fine, fine! But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making the daily commute. By the way, Zoe, I forgot who was watching that for a second. Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I tell you already. This couldn't take fucking forever. I'm eating. not really interested in joining any clubs except for the GSA. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true! You told me you would join a club this year! Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations, where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. It's UIRL. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting on by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh! I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Neat. Not in education, employment, or training. Basement dollars. Oh. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Right or not? I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. Dance clubs, bitches! 
No promises, though. Well, you at least promise me you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? I swear to God, if you keep eating. <laughs> I'm finishing this. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Oh, I must have accidentally hit the menu. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Now we're at school. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... No what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sorry. Yay! There is no way I'm going to your club. Well, okay, fuck you. Ha <laughs> eh? Meanie. Sayori is vice president of the Literature Club. Uh, their current book of the month is Mein Kampf. Stop. This is ASMR. ASMR is bullshit, and if you don't knock that off, I will smack you. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, you didn't even come close to the trash can. Fantastic. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be, to be even less. I don't read! I can't read! What do you think this is? Not the American school system? <laughs> Wait, shit, this is the Japanese school system. Okay, uh, our parents sent us a picture of a Komodo dragon. It's uh, not relevant at all. Let's keep going. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori's really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let her along sigh. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I'm not going with any consistent voices with these characters, am I? Jesus. I told you, don't call me a new member. What the fuck is with that accent? <laughs> You're not British! You're fucking American! You are eating chili fries as we speak. Fuck off. You can fuck off. W welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? I'm not a boy! Way to kill the atmosphere. Well, I mean, to be fair, can... <coughs> <coughs> Ah, Zoe, what a nice surprise. Shut the fuck up. Welcome to the club. Uh... All words escape me in this situation. This club... <laughs> is full of incredibly cute girls! Same me. 
What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest <gasps> in the club. God damn it. What? Wow. Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Zoe. Monica smiles sweetly. I don't trust her. Neither do I. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, nice, just nice, tracts of land. What the fuck? <laughs> Basically, completely out of my league. So yeah. having your smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You, you too much... Wait, no, that's you. Fuck you. Stop eating, goddammit. Yeah, you too, Monica. Come sit down, Zoe. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. I want to sit next to Yuri. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks to rank the four of a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know, just hurry and take one. Sierra grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around my fingers looking for the best angle to uh, take a bite. Cupcakes are round! What fucking angle are you looking for? Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Uh, yeah, stay away from me, jailbait. What? You're disgusting. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. Oh, this is really good. Thank you, Nuts, okay? What? Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Babaka? Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Sayori's a bitch! Well, maybe... But not for, you, you know, you, dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. They keep a whole tea set in this classroom. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. Hey, <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I bet that, you know, I believe you. <laughs> Wait, no, that was you. Again, asshole. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I look... I at least... <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Fantastic. 10 out of 10. This is the best playthrough ever. I'm glad. 
Nira <laughs> faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. But I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? Okay. As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. We're gonna get excited later. Not that way, you fuck. Why am I here? Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? Ahaha, <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. You know, like the current presidency. <laughs> Except with less Muslims getting deported. I'd rather, much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Here he also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Oh, well, we still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. I never learned how to read. So Zoe, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. But well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. What the fuck is a book? Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. <laughs> Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? I'm sure that isn't relating to anything. Anyways, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, uh, I read a horror- that's you again. God damn it. <laughs> Why am I even having you read? Ah, uh, I read a horror back once. <laughs> I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, you might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Uh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split <gasps> second. Never mind. Okay. That's right, you usually like to write about kind of things, don't you, Natsuki? Uh, what? What gave you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Siori sidles up by Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. Grab touch! Stranger danger! I'M NOT CUTE! 
not Suki, right? She writing poems. I'm going to smack you with the force of a thousand gods. <laughs> Why? You're not even looking at me. Your fucking accent. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna be the cringiest part of this video. But no! <laughs> I'm funny. No, you're not. You're not. Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! That's a key it burns to rise. You wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I... I guess it's the same for Yuri. Uh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Eh? <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri looks quizzically at Monica. I I'm gonna have to replace that with the Tim Allen. <laughs> the Tim Allen thing. You don't know what that is, do you? I do, but keep going. Okay. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Zoe? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, this helps for one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club! You're an asshole! Sayori so may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have the other clubs to look at, and... Um... I lose my train of thought. All oh, four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought. Hmm. Zoe. You, you all. I, I'm defenseless against these girls. Mostly because they have knives, but also because they're adorable. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price they need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls! <laughs> right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club club. We have levitated upwards. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Siori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Ah, oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Zoe, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Zoe, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sierra and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yes! Yas, Queen Slay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mom wanders back and forth between the four girls Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. Good fortune and not bad fortune. God knows nothing bad happens in this game. I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Ah. 
Oh. That, yet, you, you just pick which words do you want to pick. Remember, each word corresponds to a club member that you're trying to impress. Ah. Oh. Let's see. For Matsuki, I will choose... Oh, you're, you're going the Natsuki route? Which one is Natsuki? The, the pink-haired one. Alright, Yuri. Mm-hmm. Remember, she likes deep psychological and horror things. Raindrops. Am I still doing her? I, I, I don't know. You're the one choosing. Which girl do you want to date? You gotta impress them with your literature skills, Zoe. Uh, wait. So all the words I choose is for one girl. Well, no, different words impress different girls. You gotta pick the words that impress your favorite girl, so you they can become your waifu. Okay, so I gotta pick one to impress the most and choose the words. Yes. For for all the ones. Yes. Okay. Good. Um. Anyways, you ready? Uh, pleasure. Tears. It's no, an ending. Broken. Imagination. Wait, which one is she? The, the purple hair. No, like, what is she? You said something before. She likes complicated words, depression, horror, uh, complex fantasy worlds. Okay. Fantasy. Pain. Rain cloud. Whisper. A tone. Five lies. No, philosophy. Incongruent. Eternity. Nightgown. Climax. I'm incapable. Destiny. Suicide. Same. Melancholy. Melancholy? <laughs> Melancholy. No. Hi again, Zoe. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha, ha, ha. No, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I get my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Zoe. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive at first in literature when you're not even accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. What the fuck are you doing? I didn't do anything. I'm just you press the escape button. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between manga and manga. Mangaka! Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Matsuki flops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Zoe always gives it her best as long as she's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. Oh, dependable. Sayori, that's because your room Shut is so messy. Shut the fuck up. No, fuck Sayori, you. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. Well, we sure are coordinated. And you almost set your house on fire once. That happened to you in real life twice. Yeah, um... 
Both times, wasn't it Melina that stopped you? Yep. Um. She also closed an open car door when I was driving. Uh, yeah. Uh, could you elaborate? Do you want me to? What, Zoe? I mean, nothing interesting. We're not saying anything interesting, so you might as well share some shitty stories. While we're doing this? Yes. Sayore. Hmm? Uh. Anyways, so I was driving and around the corner, um, Sayori, no, eh, me, Molina. <laughs> and as we were driving down the corner, this fictional game character closed the door on me. Mayori. No. Molina! Mayori! <laughs> My favorite character in real life! <laughs> what is it? Keep going. Just call her Melina this time. Right. Melina. <laughs> uh, we, I was driving around the corner and um, the door swung wide open and Melina unbuckled and swiveled around in her seat. And leaned between the car and air. <laughs> between the car and air. <laughs> no, between the car and the um, her seat. And she reached back and he, she closed the door like a badass. And then we went to the movies and saw Captain Underpants. That wasn't the movie we saw. <laughs> we didn't go see a movie. I don't know what we were doing. Oh, probably. Probably something illegal. Yeah. Anyway, so right now, Yuri's giving you uh, a book to read. How oh, is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks so like, despite me not reading much. Thank you, Yuri. I'll definitely read this. It sounds like you're being sarcastic. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Mana to kick off some kind of scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori so Maka. What? <laughs> what the fuck was that? You know, I sometimes I get gas back up after eating. Has it been 20 minutes yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. It's been uh, way more. Alright, welcome back, bitches. Burrito. Yes, burrito. That's a word. I look taller than you. I look taller than you. <laughs> Slouch like, down again. I like being shorter. <laughs> Why do you never sit straight? You're always slouching. I don't know, why aren't you straight? I don't know, I'm always slouching. Anyways, back to Doki Doki Literature Clopey! Oh my god, they look disgusting. <laughs> well, so do you. Are you small? Oh my God! Zoe, that was a that was a white a white transition. How did that scare you? <laughs> it was a cop. A cop. <laughs> yeah. Not the white trans. Okay. What? No, I. Oh, you just happened to buy two books. It surely it's not because you were intentionally planning to give one to me. Bitch ass. Oh my god, it's the Illuminati. Yes, the Illuminati. The Illuminati sponsored this game. The Illuminati sponsor all anime waifus. How do you know you're not in the Illuminati? 
I could be. That explains why the world's gone to shit. Me a year ago. With savvy. Not savvy. Yeah, you kind of fucked that one up. Yeah, I did. I listened to other people instead of myself. But, if I continued with it, I would be living in North Carolina right now. Okay, where are you looking? At myself. <laughs> at least look at the webcam. <laughs> I really can't see myself in it. <laughs> Wait, what was my nickname? Zoe. No, my nickname. Tabby. No, my like super cool nickname. Tabby420. This is Tabby420, y'all. I'm not seeing what's going on in this sport. 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 Four girls. Well, actually, right now it's just one girl. Just one girl. With two giant boobies. I was going to say that. <laughs> With some giant titties. And a fucking barrette in her stupid hair. Which is actually pretty color hair. So, like, she's okay. Except for the fucking barrette. This is not the fucking 90s, you fucking whore. And you are just fascinated by being able to see yourself, <laughs> aren't you? Like showing a monkey a mirror. I'm just, I'm just trying to get good angles. It's you, there are no good angles. Fuck off! <laughs> oh wow, actual new art. Oh my god. Ah. Uh. Oh my god! Oh my god! <gasps> I got game. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, her face is moving. Mm-hmm. Most faces do. Ah oh, man, Monica coming in. She's such a cockblock. What's what's the female version of that? Booby Trooper. Booby Trooper? <laughs> no. I don't know what it is. What are we talking about? Cock blocking. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up on Google! <laughs> this should end well. <laughs> Cock block, right? Yes. Clam Jam. Clam Jam. Or Bushwhack. Bushwhack? Or Clitter Friends. Or Taco Blocko. Taco Blocko! <laughs> <laughs> or Twat Sweat. Pussy Pass. Honey Pop Block. Muffin Muzzle. <laughs> Box Out. <laughs> Beaver Dam. <laughs> Carpet Cutter. Cooch Check. Snatch Bat. Snatch Snag. Scissorception. Cunt punt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just learning all kinds of things today, aren't we? <laughs> it's also called Muff Rebuff. Dental Dam. Dental Dam? <laughs> dental, as in the teeth. Teeth in the Varguba. Stop, do you know what a dental dam is? It's... The female version of a condom. Yeah, what? <laughs> You didn't know that? No, I'm sorry, I didn't know that apparently the female version of a condom involves teeth. It does not involve teeth. Why is it called dental dam then? Because dental is more than your fucking teeth. That's bullshit. It's your tongue. Fuck. Do you still not understand? No, I get it, it's just dumb. Oh boy, we gotta. Which one are we gonna ship? Which girl are we gonna show our poem to first? Ew. What? I'm not a boy. Dumbass. What? That's that's not. What the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? Your bone. The bone. You said is. Poem. <laughs> poem. 
him! Oh my god! <laughs> Ghosts of the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light I have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Comes. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. You know what that means? She's a fire. She's a candle. Um. <laughs> okay. You. Okay, since that was off camera, to clarify what just happened, she almost knocked over a headphone set onto the desk. Not off the desk, she knocked it, she almost knocked it onto the desk. And she reacted like she was uh, being arrested by the police. Okay. Let's go with Monica. Oh my god, it's Yopal. And Discord. What does thought mean? Um, you. But what does thought mean? <laughs> if you look it up in a dictionary. Uh, it'll show a picture of you, and I'll say, uh, definition of thought. Uh, Zoe Peterson? Shut the, the fuck up. I'm asking my friends on Discord. You're asking them what thought means? Yeah. Okay. Creepy. What, what? Her. She's creepy? Monica's creepy as shit. How, how so? Her eyes. The, the soulless eyes? Yeah. Helen Wool. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I pee inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaning of this image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realise now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So what do you think the meaning of this poem is? She's getting born. And the doctor is peering in to see her come out. Yes. Wait, really? No! <laughs> <laughs> what else can it be? Well, you'll know later. Okay, no, you won't. But I'll know. I already know. <sighs> Why won't I know? Because you're dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> I figure stuff out on Kamen Rider all the time. Wow, I can't believe we'll figure out plot twist to a children's show. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm looking at my face! Yes, you are. Is my nose bent? What? Is this <laughs> Nose. Just, just, just a nose. It's a nose. Where is, where is it? A bite and nose. Bite. Bite, but like bent. This bite. You better include this in so I can see my profile. Okay. I'm hurting my back for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Matsuki. Underage jailbait, just like your ex girlfriend. What? My ex girlfriend is older than me. <gasps> wow, you're 
barely ever friends with anyone older than you, much less in a relationship with them. I've only been in a relationship with one person. I just added myself. Outed yourself to what? As only dating one person. Okay, who gives a shit? That's more than most of the people who see this have. Oh, it's time. Eagle, oh boy. What? This is so stupid, this is not a fool! Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Cricket can leap. Horses can race. And owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. E M C O H O C. It doesn't spell e out anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, am. I hated it! <laughs> you lying bitch! I am a lying bitch. The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kiss my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. So what do you think this poem was about? Um, uh, a predator. <laughs> um, okay, explain. <laughs> a sexual predator. Like she was kidnapped. How did you get that from this? Well, he, um, they wake her up, and then some bad stuff, and then she, like, twistedly, like, trusts them. And like, they make breakfast. Well, that's one interpretation. It's, it's a the wrong one, but it's one of all nonetheless. <laughs> oh man, what the fuck is going on? Well, they're uh, fighting. Why? Because they don't like each other's poems. That's stupid. The horse. Whores. I shouldn't call people whores. No, you shouldn't, but you do. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me. So you know the kid I hate? Yes. Yeah, don't say their name. But um, his older sister, when we were in... I did three days together. She was prancing around. I was like, I'm a size B. Just like walking around. And I'm like, you whore. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Honestly. Don't I don't know what sizes correlate to boobs. Well, I'm sorry, but I've never had to wear a bra. I've never had to think about that. Okay, um, that's like an A. That's uh, like a C. That's like a D. So like, that's B. Ah. Wait, so, so why was she bragging about having size B boobs? Because she was 10. Oh my god. 10 year olds doing that? Yeah. Fucking up. This is ASMR. Not every annoying sound is ASMR. Yes, it is, because ASMR is annoying. Uh-oh. Who are we going to support in this argument? Or are we just going to have Sayori bail us out like a little bitch? Mm. I want to support Yuri, but I also don't want to get into some deep shit. So we just want to call him the Sayori squad to sort this out for us? Well, what will happen if I choose Yuri? Um, not your people get mad at you. Whoa, that's very long. 
Um, I guess, like, not super long, but like, basically, do you want Natsuki to be mad, Yuri to be sad, or just Sayori to take over for you? Natsuki. Wait, like, so support Natsuki, or? Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised you're supporting Natsuki because you didn't like her poem at all. Oh, that was her. <laughs> you're a fucking genius. Bitch Club? Hi! Will you give me some water? I'll keep going and like... Yeah, just keep going. Because I've seen all this already. I just press the button? Yeah, you just click the mouse. Okay. I got myself some, I got myself uh, some sparkling water. There's no way you could think of that. You were right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> what did I do? You you broke everything. Now we'll have to start the game all over again. Wait, really? No! <laughs> I thought she was poisoned. Yes, Natsuki is the villain of the. She was the real villain of this game all along! Who's the real villain? Monica. Who knows? I know, but you don't. Who know? I know. Who know? No. Who no. God damn it! <laughs> You're the villain of this game! Uno Dawson. She trots away like a horse! Or should I say, like a horse! Yeah, hey, speaking of Monica, she's not in the club room right now. Oh, shit! Oh, she's off dealing drugs! Is she? No! Oh. What is this, Hunter High School? You're gonna have to cut that out. I'll just bleep out the name of the school. Uh-oh, does she have a boyfriend?
Oh, she plays piano, just like you. Where's the piano? <laughs> it, it's not in the room. She, she was in another room. The reason she's late is because she was practicing piano elsewhere. What kind of piano? I don't know. Probably just a normal one. Oh my god! What? I thought it was a dog. The dogs never even come downstairs. Switz? I need to sneeze! Oh no! She's going burn the juice! Hitler too! I renounce my German heritage. I am not a hammer on the side of a mountain. Fucking what? Bird hammer. Ah. I'm not a hammer on the side of a bird. I'm a sen of the Peters. Sen, not son, you foolish You're mortals. You're a sin of the Peters. You foolish mortals. Oh, we're having one of these inner monologues about the girl we're chasing after. And since you accidentally picked almost the entirety of Sayori words in the last poem writing, I guess that's her now. Uh... Oh, not bit too close. Stranger danger. Hee <laughs> hee. I actually I played the Yuri route when I did this, so I actually don't know what exactly is going to happen. You did the Yuri route. Well, yeah. Why? Um, because she's objectively the best waifu. <laughs> You, uh, you doing okay? You having problems? <laughs> time is it? What's well, about that time? It's 8.06. Oh my god, it's been two hours. No, we left to go get <laughs> Del Taco at 6. What time did we start? I don't know, probably closer to 6.30. Oh, it's been an hour and a half. Is that my hand? Yes. No! Yes. What's wrong with it? No! What's wrong with your hand? The picture! Is it, what, is it too close to the boobers? Yeah, that too. It's a disturbing picture. How, how, is it the angle? Yeah. And that fucking, like, tear. And that's the sweat drop. That's even worse! Oh my god. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night. Stop. When I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. <laughs> you you having problems? <laughs> My attention was caught by the scuttering. Put the mic down. <laughs> I'm going to screw up the audio quality. <laughs> Should I start over? Yeah. Raccoon. Stop that. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snark. 
my attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious was well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing bit deep my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've grown quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my brain is always handy. Every time I brandish my cotton knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pelovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Okay, so what do you think this poem was about? Okay, it was either about suicide or killing someone else. Or she's just really fucking hungry for some bread and a raccoon and her became friends. So which do you think it is? All three. Okay. Am I right? Well, yes, Zoe, you're completely right. What actually happens is she becomes friends with the raccoon, and then she kills it and commits suicide. <laughs> All three of your theories are correct. Really? No! Amy likes spiders. You know what I had to bad take me? Amy likes spiders. <laughs> Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singer voice. I had her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not girlfriends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> so what do you think this one is about? Um, fairies. 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 Furries. And also, like, kinky people. It's kink shaming. The furries and kink shaming. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Kind of. I knew it! <laughs> Not specifically furries. But kinky people. Not specifically kinks. Just things people enjoy that other people might make fun of them for. Rude. Like warriors. Rude! It's true! Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like... <laughs> tangent. Really? Tangent. <laughs> That's a rhyme. Sen. Cosen. Tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a tin table. Like playing vinyl on a piece of cross. An endless pool of meaningless love. It said load me. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> you didn't ask me what I thought that was about. 
Ah, shit, I forgot. So what did you think that one was about? What was it about? What was it about? Um, no, like, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? In the poem. She was talking about uh, a bunch of meaningless noise. Right, I think she's a schizophrenic. Right? How did you arrive to that conclusion? Because it sounds like things a schizophrenic would say. Yeah, okay. Am I right? No. But am I close? No. No. <laughs> oh. no. I pop up my scarf like on the end of a cookie jar. Scalf, not scalf. <laughs> Ow! Ow? <laughs> my soul. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle and keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and the bottles in a row. My connection <laughs> makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of star I like to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels to set away. Now because the bottle save the day. Bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I wish. Ah. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deep in, deep in my fingers, go and exploring that cave to see if the secrets I have the risk can is. Digging and digging, scrapping and scrapping. I blow dust on bottle caps, it doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf can use more my friends look through my locked room door. Finally, all done. I open up and, and in come my friends in the common instant hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bar. But every time I let them go, it shatters against a bit of the tower between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts on the child on right the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends are not smiling. They're all shouting, and pleating and something, but our heads echo, 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 it's not my head. So what do you think this one is about? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's about a prostitute. A prostitute? Yeah. Explain your thought process. <laughs> They want her bottle. Did you seriously bottle as a euphemism for Varguba? <gasps> yeah! Okay, then what does what is the shattering a metaphor for? Assuming a bottle is a Varguba. Tinkle Town Breaks. Do you even need to ask if you're right about this one? No. Okay. She's gonna keep writing shell till she dies. <gasps> Does she die? <coughs> Who knows? If Yuri wanna walk home, would you walk home with Yuri or would you walk with Sayori? Sayori. Okay. Wow, that was a pretty quick answer. Monica's suggesting maybe we only see Sayori as bubbly and cheery because that's how she acts around us. I thought that was a fidget spinner! A new fidget spinner. <laughs> Order it from japan.com. True. Hey, uh, the poem. The poem. Zoe the poem. I'll be your beach. You're a beach. <laughs> Shut the beach up. <laughs> that doesn't work. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place. A bitch for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight and see that sparkles as brilliant light the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the bitch that washes you where it your way. I'll be the bitch. I'll be the bitch that you daydream about each day. I'll be the bitch that makes your heart leap in a way you thought I left you long ago. 
Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, hold my hand, wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint tale, set you free in that windy cell. Remember, I'm really the reason you wanna film any pretty ill. I'll be, I'll be the bitch that washes your worries away. I'll be the bitch that makes you daydream about each day. I'll be the bitch that makes you heart leap in a way that I had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own bitch, your own escape, you'll learn to let you Okay, I think we get the point. What do you think the poem was about? Um, she has a crush. That's a lot more simple than your other <laughs> answers. Zoe, I swear to God. Hold on. The playtime of this playthrough would be cut in half. If you would stop fucking around. Not Mexican gauge. Your Mexican gauge? What? What? The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Yes, there's more. Do you not see the scroll bar? <sighs> Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and I fall even more. Channel is a feather, a dry quill express on ash. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. What, what is that? Like that? They're just going like that? Zoe, so it, it means <sighs> they're grabbing it like this. Like. So she's catching her like this. Uh, with a back. Theoretically, it, uh, she's a feather in this metaphor. She, so she's holding a feather like that. Which is perfectly reasonable. <sighs> the hand of a beautiful, beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which mounted nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose in me. Seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. So what do you think this woman's about? Uh, mom. Mom? Yeah. Why? Um, uh, she responds in a hollow voice. That's it? No. It's not actually mom. It's... Uh, it's like, uh, God. 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 Uh, of a sort. Or she's a lesbian. I don't know what to say of that. I'm like, am Fuck I it. right? No. Oh. Uh... A marvel of millions of years of making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the sun face. Surfaced. <laughs> sun face. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it's a warrior name. It actually could be. Under a clear blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds and endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will you eat the tide? <laughs> or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. I sound like Commander Pilots. No, you don't. <laughs> Yet we still build sand castles. 
I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The fierce is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. So what's this one about? Peer pressure. Peer pressure? Yes. How do you figure? Um, um, you don't figure, you just made that up on the spot. No, I figured while I was reading. It's like, it keeps tugging at her and tempting. Will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Peer pressure. Yeah, that, that's, I guess that's fair. Am I right? And no. <laughs> Why is she so sad? Oh. Why is she so sad? It is a mystery, my dear. Is she a teenage mother? <laughs> no. I will say that right now. She is not. This just got a little bit real. I do. What? Yes. I thought it was supposed to be all like dark and twisty. Yeah, we're we're gonna get to that part, but right now, it's like murdery dark and twisty. We're gonna get to that. But for God's sakes, have some sort of reaction. Ah! Uh. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was playing this the first time, I was like, oh, fuck, dude. And like, this entire game, it felt like uh, juggling your friend's mental illnesses, the simulator. So literally my life. Yes, your life. That's why I'm so like, uh, about it. Yeah, that's fair. Man, this is really fucked up seeing my own name in here. <laughs> because it's literally too real. I swear I've had this conversation with someone. Uh, <laughs> this game is very uh, unapologetically realistic uh, when it comes to depiction of depression. I don't like it. <laughs> Does she also have depression? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, she's got something different. She's a necrophiliac. Okay, um... <laughs> that's a bit of a jump. <laughs> it just... just tad off. <laughs> She's a mortician. Right, she brought essential oils. Oh shit, she's a mom. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, she even has the generic anime mom turtleneck sweater! Wait, is she? No! Oh. She's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's her mental issue. She's a whore. Feminism in action. That's not what that is! <laughs> oh, she brought, she brought a knife. Oh shit, she's a cutter. Wait, is she? I knew it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was fast. <laughs> She's a vampire. No. <laughs> She's addicted to cutting. She's a fucking necrophilia. <laughs> it's not what necrophilia means. Yeah, it is. No, necrophilia. You're thinking. Hemophiliac is blood. Necrophiliac is corpse. She's a fucking hemophilia. Also, uh, you have had a girlfriend and a fiance. Can you confirm that putting your finger and challenge, or that putting someone's finger in your mouth and licking it is the best way to secure a proper relationship? Somewhat. Somewhat. Got it. She likes you so much she wants to die. Is she gonna kill herself? Who knows? She is, isn't she? It is a mystery, my dude. Am oh, I right? Well, that depends. Uh, what's your decision here gonna be? 
Oh shit. You, you want I should save the game? Oh shit, yeah. Just in case we make the wrong decision. Uh-huh. So what, what, what should we do here? Oh shit. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Um, I picked I love you. And? Um, interestingly. Did she die? It is a mystery, my dudes. But did she die? Who knows? You know. Well, yes, I know, but I'm not telling you. Why? Because you gotta make this decision for yourself. I love you. Alrighty. Wow. This guy's a dick. You're a dick. <laughs> what? I wonder what Sayori's poem is. Oh, shit. Is it about suicide? What the Sayori's poem? It's different from the one that she practiced. One that I haven't read before. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. We get it, keep going. Get out of my head before I do it. Get out of my head before I listen to the cinema. What did she say to you? Get out of my head before I show you. Is she gonna kill him? What? Maybe. Look, so what do you think this poem is about? She's gonna kill him. She's gonna kill him. Monica wants her to kill him. Okay. Am I right? No. <laughs> You're never right about these. Alright. So, we're just going to wake her up. Get, get, her, get her to school. <sighs> oh man, it's something my boyfriend would do. It just feels right. Wait, 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 wait. What? She's either committing suicide, or she's cheating on him, or she's naked. Uh, what if it's all three? I will be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. That's fucked up. That's an asshole thing to say. Yeah. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. You didn't kind of breach of privacy, she might be in her underwear. That would be awkward. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say I knew it. What the fuck? Keen, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Well, what's going on is that you made the wrong choice. What? This is disturbing. You shouldn't have did that. It's all your fault. It's your fault she killed herself. Shut the fuck up. Or is it? Okay, let's uh, let's um, let's go back and try and make Stop. what? Recording. Oh. Okay, so welcome back. Zoe just uh, killed Sayori. I did not. Uh, I mean, it is kind of your fault, though. Shut you made the you made the you're the one who made the choice. Shut the fuck up. But yeah. Nothing is worse than worse than Earth. But yet, not so. Yep. Never, never, never. You can never take it back. That's the end of the game. Seriously? She's dead. I Wait. mean, unless you want to go back and, you know, not fuck up. We have to keep her alive? Oh, that's funny. See, um... Before, in, in Sayori was here. Wait. And now, there's that. What? So, let's just uh, try going back. Keegan. Uh-oh, that's not good. 
Uh, oh, that girl is <coughs> my neighbor and good friend since we were children. Uh, you know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but just kind of works out. Uh, <gasps> Man, don't you just hate it when your friends do that? Five nightmares tonight. I'm gonna. <laughs> Fucking murder you. This game isn't scary at all. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh oh, he's always walked to school alone. You've always walked to school alone. There's never been anyone else. Oh my god. Levitation mode activate. What the fuck? Who should we show our poem to? Nancy. What? I didn't see that one last time. Seriously? Uh, yeah. This game, some of it is randomized. Uh -huh. This is different. It's a continuation of her first poem from the first playthrough. <sighs> so what do you think this one is about? Say it. Say it. Uh -huh. Got it. You wanna be energy bitch? <laughs> Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge. Oh shit. I I wasn't doing that. Uh, who should we support? Yuri. What the fuck? Again. <laughs> Why did that sound like a fucking we fit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're like dead. I'm not. What? You're dead. Why? You, yourself, you are fucking dead tired. What time is that? It's like 9.30. Why are you pointing it out? Because we need more interesting reactions from this. And you're too tired to do anything. Do you want to just finish this tomorrow morning? Like we could finish that when mom and dad go on a date? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Just whenever we get the chance. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten, like, what, at least a month's worth of you do once a week? <laughs> yeah, we've gotten a lot, a lot of footage. Although, it's gonna be significantly less when I cut it down. Yeah. Alright, see ya bitches next month. See ya, Eat bitches. Ass.